Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. This time a spoken one for a change. It's been a while since I've done spoken video. It's not going to be a very long one and I'm not necessarily going to abandon the silent format that I've been using recently. I often really like to do things that way. But if you're enjoying hearing my voice again, give me a little thumbs up there. So what I'm going to do today is just look at some of the changes that have been made in the recent beta versions of progressions and these will come out in the next update which could come out uh, anytime in the next few hours or day or couple of days depending on Apple after I make this video. So some of these new features that have been added are really cool. Some of them are things that people have been asking for. Uh, I've asked for a few of these features myself, as well as other people on the Audiobus forum. And I think that these make the app a lot more enjoyable to use, give a much quicker and more enjoyable workflow that takes more advantage of the touch screen. So first, I'm just going to let you hear a little example of um, a song. So we've got song mode on here. We've got uh, sync to host and let's play through So you can see that just started uh, going back to the start again. That's because I've got this loop button pressed here. Now, what is uh, the first change that I'm happy to see here? Previously, you could only preview chords here in the chord toolbox. You couldn't preview chords in the song sequencer, but now you can do that if the preview button is on up here. And what we do is click, we don't click here because that will basically select uh, something for, for editing purposes, but instead we click on the header. And this is really, really useful. So I'm really glad to see that added. Now, another very, very cool thing that has been added is that Let's just uh, close this for a second. So up here uh, in the toolbox, we can now drag things around to move their location. But let's first just play through what's in the toolbox here. Now, this is something that uh, I just generated using the generate button. And I'll turn song off. And I'll uh, just press rewind here. Well, we're on the first one anyway. Okay, let's just play through this. Okay, so before you couldn't move these around, now you can with a simple drag and drop. And you can move these around anywhere. Now the only thing you can't do is you can't move the first one, the root. Let's say I try and move that, you can see it still stayed as a C here. So be aware of that. Um, another thing we can do is we can, let's just, I'm going to have to use my finger, I think, for to long press on this. Okay. Um, we can now drag directly from the toolbox into the song sequencer. So this is great. So basically, I can preview things up here. Uh, 
and let's say I find something that I like, I can just drag it in. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's say, for example, this C. Let's say I want to change that. You can see now that has changed to this. So uh, this is really, really a nice feature. The only thing that's still missing for me is there is no um, undo and redo, which I really want to see. So anyway, I'm just going to drag that C back down there. Um, so that's one thing we can do. Now, another thing we can do is we can uh, preview in the song sequencer by pressing on the headers. Before, there was no way to preview in the song sequencer. Again, you've got to make sure the preview button is on here. Now, another thing you can do is you can move. I think I'm going to have to use my finger for this. Hang on. second here. Okay, so what you got to do here is select some chords. You can see I selected those first four. Then I click on the header, number one, and I can now move those over. And they've been pasted in there. So that's another uh, very cool thing. Pull them back. Okay, what else have we got? Um, this is quite a nice feature, which uh, I asked for and um, has been added already, so that's great. I'm sure we're going to see loads of other cool updates. So the arpeggiator and the strummer um, have different patterns, and you know you can customize these and so on. Paul goes into all those in, in his video. Plus, they're in the manual, so I'm not going to go into all that here. This is not a detailed tutorial. Although I will mention, again, one thing I asked for that got added. I haven't actually tested yet if this is working, so hopefully it is. Before, when you went into the manual, let's say you scroll down somewhere and then you went back into the app to try something out. When you closed the manual, close, help. When you reopened the manual, it always went back to the start, which I find extremely irritating. But now it saves its position. So that is great. Um, anyway, back to this extra feature that's been added. So previously, for example, if you had, let's say, the ARP on F, and then you moved to the strummer, uh, the strummer would also be on F mode. And let's say then I changed the strummer to C and I went back to the ARP. The ARP would be on C mode. So that wasn't ideal because you might, for, for example, for live performance, want to change from ARP pattern A to strum pattern B and so on. So now uh, it'll remember the last state for each one. And when you change back over, it'll go back to that. So those are great features, aren't they? Mm, before I go, I just want to mention a um, couple of things. You know, what are the advantages of having the song sequencer? Mm, I mean, there's a lot that you can do in here that you can't do up in the chord toolbox. So you can see, for example, in my uh, song here, I have set it so that here we've got three quarter notes, and the next one is going to be five quarter notes. Um, and you know you do that by using these length things here. Now, one thing I've asked for is why do we only have um, whole number values here? Like for example, this is three quarter notes, but I mean I might want something like. Um, half a quarter note I might want. You know, so like like scalar two does, for example, you can choose a lot of different values, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and so on. Uh, I think this is something that Paul is interested in implementing. So if it's possible to implement, I would expect that that will come into 
a future update and it'll be a great addition. Of course, there are other things you can do as well here, like um, change whether a step is playing an ARP pattern or a block chord or a strummed pattern or whatever. Again, I won't go into those things. They're all in Paul's uh, preview. And Paul has also brought out a new video as well, which I haven't got around to watching yet, but there's a lot in there. Last thing I'd like to mention, if you haven't read it yet, in my last video, I also linked to it, and I'll link to it in this, is David Collette's great paper on um, kind of some of the theory behind this. Uh, why, for example, does this just have major and minor mode um, rather than all the different, you know, mixolydian and so on, whatever other modes and scales. Um, it's, it seems like it's something limiting, but it's actually not. Uh, it's one of the things that makes this a very powerful tool. Um, so read all about the theory behind this app, as well as getting a little bit of a history of how music theory developed. The appendices also have a lot of little interesting things. It's really, really worth a read, and I'd say a lot of work went into it, so absolutely hats off to David for that. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed this, and if I get time, I'll make a few other short videos as significant updates come out or are about to come out. See you in the next video.